We knew that China would hit back at the United States with sanctions now that Nancy Pelosi has visited Taiwan. So what are the sanctions? There are a few and I have listed the most significant ones and let's just go over them one by one. Future phone calls between uh, Chinese and US defense ministers is going to be not there. They are going to cancel all the calls. So what it really means is if there is a crisis situation developing and to diffuse the tension, high level calls will not be made, at least from Chinese side. It is a different matter what will happen if the United States calls them and then if they don't pick up. Well, we have to assume that they will not pick up. However, that just makes the flashpoint a little bit more uh, dangerous in that once things start, you know, escalating, there is no way to take the heat out of the system to let tempers cool down. That's what it means. Next, what they're saying is illegal immigrants, legal assistance on criminal matters and combat of transnational crimes. What would this be? Remember that China was often one of the counterparties in a Bitcoin transaction. And we know that Bitcoins were used primarily as a way of exchanging money for drugs. And, and those kinds of crimes that China used to help the United States with, they're saying that they will no longer work with them. I think that is probably shooting themselves in the foot. This is my personal opinion, because once this stops and it, you, know, you start seeing the activity on the ground, then what's going to happen is that the, the world community will stop using Bitcoin for transactions. And I'm already seeing that. All that will be needed to be done is for the United States to make sure that one side of the transactor, for example, a drug dealer, is completely flushed out and finished. It's a long drawn process, but I don't think that is going to be a big deal, but it is going to hurt China in the long run. That's my opinion. Illegal immigrants, well, Chinese illegal immigrants, uh, uh, you know, going to the uh, United States, that's not a big number. However, there is something there that I'm missing. Maybe China was helping United States and tracking some illegal immigrants in the US because China has much more of an active role in Canada, I'm told. So we don't know if that could be one of the things that uh, US was working with China on. And that part looks like that also is going to be downplayed, which means possibility of illegal immigrants from China might come into Canada and then sneak into United States. So that's a problem. The United States have so many people trying to sneak in. This will be one among 100 other countries. And the next one is legal assistance for uh, on criminal matters. I, I don't know. This is like cases where uh, United States may be trying to uh, get China's help on some legal cases. I don't think that's a big deal. US can uh, you know, make up for that, my opinion. Again, Taiwan can help them there. Synthetic opioids, this is a big deal. Fentanyl is a lab-grown opioid, which is why it's called synthetic opioid. Well, fentanyl has a medical use. For those people with advanced cancer, where the pain is very, very high, they, uh, the doctors usually prescribe fentanyl. Fentanyl is believed to be 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. And morphine is a normal drug given for cancer patients to alleviate their pain. So the problem is if, if fentanyl is used only for medicinal drugs, that's one thing. But as every other drug which is related to opioids, you know, fentanyl also is in the market in the US and fentanyl can be deadly. It can kill somebody. So that is a huge, huge concern for uh, United States. They have been working with China to try and stop them from making this uh, synthetic opioids. However, uh, the control has been elusive. There have been very many uh, articles and videos on YouTube. You can go and look at China and then fentanyl and you will see them. So you will understand that this is one big problem. So what else are they saying? They are also saying that they will no longer work on climate change. Again, a big problem. You know, I have traveled through China about 20 years ago. I'm 20 years ago. You know, uh, there are cities where you will never see the sun. Even at the height of the noon, you will not see the sun. There's just a, a gray blur and that is your sunlight for you. 
And even on days when it rains for two, three hours, and it rains heavily in some places in, in China. And after that, no sun. It was that polluted. And if United States and China do not work towards improving the climate in China, this is going to be very bad news for Chinese. So I don't know why they are trying to cut their own nose in, in, in a way to in, in an attempt to try and punish uh, the United States. And this is really baffling. Finally, this is the most important one or uh, one of the most significant ones. Pelosi and her family are being sanctioned for visiting Taiwan, which means none of the Pelosi members can be in Taiwan. Although someone tells me that Pelosi's son is right now in China and so is uh, and, and her husband, Paul Pelosi, has a lot of business interests in China. So I don't know what this sanctioning means, whether they can go or not, or whether they can whether they can put some proxies. One way or the other, they'll get their business done. So the Pelosi is not somebody that you're going to stop from doing anything. So long story short, the Ch China is trying many things to try and make it look as if it has the power to hit back at the United States, except for the fentanyl and perhaps the uh, sanctions on the Pelosi family. I don't see much of an impact. However, it's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Um, follow this column. There may be some you know, developments in the future and I'll be happy to post them. Namaskar. Thanks for watching and please remember to click on the bell button for notifications and also don't forget to subscribe. Namaskar.